What's up, motherfuckers? It's Moist Alex bringing you another video. How you guys doing, man? It's the new year. Hopefully, everybody's doing okay and you're off to a good start. It's a lot of crazy things going on, man, but we just here to live it and see it, man. So, uh, this is a, just a quick video. I know I haven't posted as much as I wanted, but this is kind of a response to one of the other videos I made, uh, which was Solo in the Nightmare with the Blunge. And it got a lot of negative reviews. Um, and you know, like I said, I don't, I don't, I'm not confrontational and I need the feedback so I can get better at what I'm doing. And really it was a misunderstanding. I see a lot of people saying that this is not what they wanted to see or, or they didn't know what was going on. And that's mainly because the title of the video says, you know, so long, uh, the nightmare with the bludgeon and updates. So those updates are geared towards my subscribers who know me and they kind of see what's going on and know what's, what's popping. So if y'all follow me, you will see everything that's going on and understand what I'm talking about. However, the title can also be misleading. So I'll take fault in that. However, I'm going to see and say that maybe there was a need and I looked around and there's people that post videos about, you know, how to solo this thing. So I was kind of curious as to why, you know, and maybe they found my video first. It happens. So I'm going to go ahead and post a video. It's going to show a quick example. I'm going to give you some tips. It's not a guide. It's just quick tips and example of the kill with no, with nothing you do like full on kill, no edits, no nothing. We going straight raw on this motherfucker. So, um, just some quick tips for your melee setup. Highly recommend getting the amulet of blood fury. Of course, to have full bandos, you can have like a dwarven helmet instead of the uh, face guard or the helm of net. Um, if you got a fire cape instead of middle cape, use it or inferno, whatever you really got bludgeon. I recommend the Blungeon. Don't use that goddamn Elder Maul. It is too damn slow. It, I mean, you could do it, but it is too damn slow. And the time that you get to kill, I mean, you might be looking at 30 minutes kill, so you got to be able to survive for 30 minutes, you know? And if you don't get hits, it is trash. So I do not recommend that at all. You want something that's kind of fast. So this or the Inquisition Mace, whatever you can really afford. Um, some people use some of that other stuff, like what is it, the Kur Kur Kurgle, Krugel, or whatever the fuck, Kurgel. I don't know what the hell, it looked like a little flag, and I'm sorry if I didn't remember the damn name, but I don't play often enough to keep up with everything. Um, and of course, you can have like barrels, gloves, D boots. You don't even have to have a ring. I mean, you could put, um, you know, a ring of suffering uh, imbued with the recoil to help with some of the damage back. I mean, just whatever you feel comfortable with. And if you don't have a, a Amulet of Blood Fury, I highly recommend having something that heals. The SGS works great. Don't get me wrong. It works great, but you need passive healing. So from the amulet or when you're just using the staff to kill a pillage, you need some kind of passive healing. And these two, uh, man, it's just, I've gone a phase and a half without needing to eat. It is beautiful. Okay, so besides that, when it comes to the mage setup, if this is your first time, just take literally the staff. The staff doesn't need mage bonus. But however, you know, the accuracy just helps you kill the pillars faster. So you definitely want to increase that as you get more comfortable, but it's not necessary. As long as you get okay with the phases, you can get through them pretty quick. It'll just take you longer for the kill, but you won't lose much health. So definitely make sure you pay attention to what you're doing and learn the mechanics first. I recommend you go to the nightmare world and um you know kind of practice with everybody there to get a gist of what you need to do and get used to the mechanics and then go off to try to solo when it first came out i was there of course everybody was there in every world but after a while i kind of fiend off on my own after like four or five kills and did it by myself it is very easy once you get the hang of it but it is a very long fight and concentration and focus is key so those are the tips that i can really give you and as you get comfortable, start to add more pieces. I would start off by maybe one piece of Ancestral or Arams if you have it. And then add the Occult Necklace and, you know, maybe the boots and the cape. And just slowly add everything else. Now, until you can add two other pieces of Ancestral, I don't think it's, it's really beneficial to only have two. You need to have three or one. That, that's what I say where you get the best benefit from. And then, of course, a spec weapon. So because I'm comfortable now, I don't need to have the SGS anymore. So you can bring that instead of claws and use the SGS as much as you can to keep you on your, you know, on your feet. Besides that, that's everything. So let's get right into the kill. And I'll see you guys when we get there. Um, pot up before you go. So one way I would say to pot up is, you know, drink a Sarah Brew, drink the Restore, drink a Combat Potion. And then what I like to do is I like to also eat 
a anglerfish. I was about to say rocktail. And also uh, hit a stand pot. Shit. So once you do that, you get everything back. And then you can head on that way. Now while I run, I also flick uh, rapid heal so it can reset the timer on my max health. And this is just to give me a better advantage while I'm there. Also, uh, I've sometimes gone and used the ancient mace at my house, but you know, I don't really need to do that at this moment. So I'll see you guys when we get there. Actually, I'm gonna just keep this rolling. This is raw footage. I'm not editing nothing. This is going to just be straight raw footage, <laughs> straight raw footage. If I die, then of course I'm gonna edit to the next time I run there. I'm gonna do the exact same thing until we get the kill, right? I'm a little rusty on this, but we're going to see what we do. This is straight raw footage for y'all. No edits, no cuts. I probably brought more mage than I wanted to. Since I'm rusty, I should have brought a little less until I got back to it. But we going with the flow, baby. Oh, also make sure your quick praise are set up. I typically like to have the melee and uh, piety on because um, I, fla I flash here and there. But with her and the way I've been lagging lately, I don't know. It's been the world really that's been lagging. And uh, this is a Soul Wars. Uh, Soul Wars. Or, yep, it is. I'm going to go to another world. Whenever I get lag, I like to make sure at least my, um, my melee prayer is on. Because usually you can tank the other hits. Yeah, you'll get hit with a 30 or so. But I'd rather not get hit with 50s with the melee. And since it takes her two ticks to use that. You definitely want to make sure that that's the main priority you focus on. And, you know, kind of like with Jad, if y'all have done Jad, you can do Nightmare. I mean, I highly recommend that you, if you haven't done Jad, Jad is probably a good practice for this boss because you won't really waste that many supplies uh, as you would here. Um, so I would highly recommend that. So, okay, now that we're here, go ahead and disturb her. And it's going to take like 30 seconds. So what I like to do now, because the bludgeon is really good because it's two-handed, but the Inquisition's Mace with the Defender, uh, Avernic Defender, man, oh, it destroys her. But the bludgeon does just good. There are people that, you know, beat me plenty of times with the kill um, with that. And also, I would say set up your F keys. If you don't know how to do that, uh, go to your settings. And I think it's in graphics. Oh, they changed this. This looks a little bit different. You go to all settings. I think you can do it that way with key binds or something, but we'll have to show you that later. But I have that going back and forth between my inventory. Good specs. So what I like to do is go back and forth between this and melee. Sometimes I'll just leave it there and just be ready. But you know, sometimes with her screeching, I don't know why. But it freezes me up sometimes. Like if I'm really sleepy, I might jump or something just because I didn't expect it. Or I don't know, man. It's just weird. See, because I was already there, I was prepared. See the little shadows just run out the way. And then just every time you got three ticks for her, ma uh, for her mage and her range attack. When she does this little bone breaking thing to shoot out the little spikes. That's her uh, range attack. When she does the little spinning flower attack, that's her uh, mage attack. So with these guys with the husk on this face, you want to make sure you're playing magic. But if she's doing uh, range, prioritize that and keep on with the fight. And just try to knock them out as soon as you can. Sometimes it gets a little difficult because if you're maging, you got to switch back to your melee gear to just make sure you knock them out pretty quick. But sometimes you can just mage them and that works just as well too. But, you know, we'll probably have to do that later on in this fight. And as you can see, man, the fucking, the fury, I'm max health. Like, I'm not even worried about my health right now. You know, we're, we're doing good. We're relaxed. And that's another thing while you're fighting. Just relax. Don't panic. If you make a mistake, just focus on the prayer. Sometimes, you know, if you got to switch your weapons and stuff, take your time. You don't have to try to be like switching six things at once in one tick. Focus on getting the prayer right and then switch a few items and go back. Take your time. 
See, as you can see, when she does that, I'm focused on what I need to pray first, then I switch. That's what you want to make sure you do. Focus on the prayer. As soon as I know she's going to do it, go back to it. Just always be ready. If you got to eat, I'm going to show you what to do. As soon as she do it, do your one attack. I mean, do your one click and then move on. Now, because she's doing this, I don't need to necessarily pray. I can move around. See, now I'm starting to get a little more comfortable. Can flash her a little bit. It'll help save some prey, but because I'm 99, I really don't need to. I'll make the kill. Now, because I'm down health, I'm going to prioritize making sure my melee is on because I don't want to make a mistake and then take some massive damage and get one hit after getting this far. Let's kill those guys. We're good. Very smooth kill so far, but in a matter of seconds, it can change. I've had that happen before. Completely fucked the last phase up. Take off the prayer. We're going to eat up and just be safe just in case. While, since this part is a little slow, we can take advantage of that. And you can run over here to kind of get her to walk. Actually, I recommend using the blunge inspect. Oh, I wasn't even praying. My God. The blunge inspect really does help you do a lot of damage. So I would recommend doing that. You do increase damage for a while, the lower your prayer is. So I would highly recommend you do that. The more that, the more prayer points that you're losing. You do a lot more damage. Look at that. We're starting to hit her now. Oh my goodness, good heals. Alright, now when you hit her, just take your time kind of switching all your weapons. Make sure you get everything on that you need. Step in the right spot. Just take your time. There's no need to rush this part. Now, what I like to do is stand closer to the middle here. But just be wary. She can melee you still. So just kind of stand here where you got open space. When these guys come up, you can just switch to the blunder and just hit them. See, I almost missed that. So you definitely want to be ready at all times. And then you can just go back to hitting. No biggie. No biggie. All right, we hit that one. There is no need to use Augury. I forgot to say that. It doesn't help you hit any better. So it's all about the accuracy. Perfect. So while she's doing that, we can save on some prayer. And you want to be careful here. Stand on the flower spot so you can hit over there. I'm going to flash her for a little bit. Got a little bit of comfort. It's really easy. Just take your time. Pace yourself. Get out of there. Come back. You know, it's kind of weird. She's not... I have her tagged. But she's not tagged. Let's see. Oh. I don't know why she's not tagged. See, like I said, sometimes you can just mage them, so... Uh, it's just a little bit slower. The melee hits him a lot better. So we're going to go ahead and hit him with that. Flash that real quick. Go back to doing what you do. Ooh, hit a 70. Another 70. Alright, now for this part, if you had an SGS, definitely want to hit the Sleepwalker with that. But, because I don't, just try to hope you get something with this. And we did. Nice. Go ahead and switch everything back on. 
piety back. Make sure you pray right. Get back to the attack. Now with this phase, it's going to be a little bit longer because we have the little fucking parasite to worry about. Now, some people like to spec it. I personally don't. I prefer to use that on the boss. And she's not going to go to that right away. So with this phase, you got your prayers to switch. So the next prayer is the one that does. So magic is really range. Range is melee. And melee is magic. So you just got to remember that. If you have your settings on, you'll see in the chat when it goes back. Like now, you'll hear that noise and it'll say the cursor is worn off. And then you just got to kind of be wary of that. Because there are times where I forget and I'm just completely oblivious. And I'm switching like mad, like a madman. So again, take your time. I missed my click. This is going to be a bad one. So take your time. Heal back up. Let her do that. Go ahead and heal back up. Take your time. No need to rush. Alright. Back at it. Pot up. And we're going to have to spec her out. Uh-oh. Almost fucked up there. All right, let's get these specs going. Ooh, that's a nice spec. Oh, yes. Make sure you drink. Keep it moving. Whenever the parasite come out, I like to make sure my prayer is right first, then attack. I mean, sometimes you can get lucky if the parasite gets stuck under her and won't heal her for that much. But... There's a lot of better ways of doing it, trust me. But, like I said, I'm just more relaxed and just want to show you how to make sure you get the kill. That's my main focus. It's to make sure you can get the kill. And, of course, that, of course, making sure you kill her. I mean, the parasite would help you out. But, if you mess up because you're panicking, then you're not going to be able to make the kill. And, Blood Fury is just helping us out a lot. And, like I said... Play with sound so you can hear a lot of this stuff happen. Like, you know that means she's going to do this shit. And then you can hear, like, the curse wears off on you, too, so. If you're not able to play with sound, just pay attention to the chat. See, when she gets stuck like this, it's a good thing. But when she melees, you get fucked. And I didn't switch in time, but we got lucky there. We got really lucky. We was able to tank that motherfucker. We're going to be a little more cautious this time. We're going to keep our melee on. Oh, we missed it. And that's the only thing with me. Sometimes my mouth slips. So that's just my fingers are at the time of night that I be playing, man. It's just probably not a good time. I'm probably already tired from work. This doesn't help my case here. <laughs> like I said, get the prey right. Get your prayer on. Got lucky with that one hit whack. Now, once you get to the next phase, man, it's going to be really easy. So, once you get past this second one, this is the hardest phase that you'll ever see. You master the second phase, you can kill this boss easy. That is the biggest key here is mastering the second phase, not letting her take so much damage. And you don't take as much damage because if you're getting fucked, while you're trying to kill that parasite and you're focusing on eating, parasite is going to heal her ass up like crazy. And you're going to have to knock her all the way down again. It's just a pain in the ass to constantly go back through that cycle. And try to make sure you eat and only drink this around that time when the parasite is going to come up. The first time I did this, I ate so fucking much, man. It wasn't even funny. Just be ready with melee. 
Awesome. She didn't heal much at all. And definitely make sure you're in a world that does not lag. Man, that has been my pet peeve. I joined the world and forgot it was a soul world world when I first got back. And it got me fucked so many times. It's clicked already. Slightly past it. I wish they kind of had like little circles around there, little targets to kind of help you. Safe. Let's not ruin the great kill we got. Did I not have the right prayer? I don't think I did. Just wait after you hit. Now we can go ahead and focus on these guys knocked down. Go ahead and hit this guy. Right, man, we are sucking. I don't know how we getting that lucky, but we are, man. <laughs> I'll take it any day. I think the tag wears off if you're not attacking her. Single Nesty has not healed me as great as I would like it to. Like, he's get some nasty hits on these portals, man. Focus on the prayer. Sometimes she won't do her portals when that happens, so you just gotta be prepared for that. Key is not to get too comfortable, but to be relaxed. It's a very hard task to do. Now this is tricky. You also have to be careful. Sometimes those guys, the uh, the husk. If you kill the portal at the same time that she uh, calls that out, man, you fuck yourself so bad. I've done that too many times, so just make sure you pay attention to the portal health. Like, you see me switching really slow. I know it's not really good. I'm rusty. Haven't done this in a while with the fucking bludgeon. You can hit her. Get out the fucking way. Let's see, where is my health at? There it is. So we can go ahead and go up. This camera angle is not ideal. This is where we want to be at. Now we home free. I 
watch out for the spores if they're not near you stay where you're at don't move if it was near you take like a step back and have her just wait for her to come at you so you can do something like this see that she walks to you just be careful because you still it is not a big deal it's just it helps when you're trying to eat and do so much and all of a sudden when she decides to do her rush attack if you can't run out the way it's a pain in the ass if you're like right in the middle of her see like here i can just move even if i was stepping away one step is all i needed and i use much more prayer than i anticipated this time around but that's okay i mean we're gonna make this kill anyway Got to keep on the attack. This is the easiest phase right now. Again, just like the first phase, shouldn't really take that much damage. But in this phase, the husk can't attack you. So, you know, you really don't take any damage at all. There's a spore right there. So over here. It hit me. So now you can kind of see what's going to happen. That's going to hit me too. You just got to be careful not to get hit by the spore so many times in a row after it's been a minute. Because then you're not going to be able to run, and you're kind of going to be forced to take some damage if you can't get out the way in time. And when you see your yawn stop, put your run on immediately, because you see it can be disastrous if you don't. She can hit up to 50s. I think she can hit up to 60s, actually, with that bad boy. Alright, we're running out of prayer faster than we want. We're going to turn off piety. And we're going to start flashing. Not the ideal way, but we can still do some damage. I just want to make sure I get this kill. Still have one dose, so we'll be fine. Take your turn. Just focus on the task at hand. Pay attention. It's a lot of repetitive stuff you do. This is a long endurance fight. Literally all it is is an endurance fight. If you played some, some of the newer Final Fantasies, you know just an endurance fight. <laughs> and those games really help with your endurance in battles too, because you you know you kind of get used to the repetitive stuff. And look what I just did. <laughs> That's not good. We're not going to take any chances. I'll make sure we get this fucking kill. The beauty about this is I don't need a restore to put my combat up. However, I need it for my magic. So, that's going to make things interesting. But we should have her, man. We're almost there. Made a little faulty mistake. But as you can see, you can make those mistakes and recover depending on the equipment you got. Just need one good hit. Bingo. Oh, watch yourself. Now you can just pray and just take your turn. 
get the pillars down and that is it. Not bad for the first time back on doing it with the uh, Blungeon. I haven't really soloed in a while, man. I've just been playing other shit, so. Uh, playing Seven Days to Die and just doing Soul Wars, you know, so I haven't really been touching this game. I'll try to run under her really quick. I'm going to wait for those to go away. Just don't want to hold myself right now, so I'm going to get back in the opening. Over here. I'm mindful where she is. Out the way. Take your time. Out the way. I like having that tag on there because it helps you see where her box is, man. So if you're not using rune light, just be wary of the space that she can take up. Oh, that was a close one. Last one. Let's take our time. Oh, we got the heal, baby. Now the damn staff wants to heal. Need some good hits on it. Oh, really? You hit a one dog. And that's it. Not as great as I always do. We usually have much more supplies left, but, you know, can't complain. And we got Zami Brew, so 23 minutes is not horrible. We messed up a lot. And, I mean, some of my Inquisitor kills are like 21 minutes, 22. So, like I said, the, the Blungeon does a really good job. Like, you're saving yourself by like a few minutes. So, it's not worth the investment if this is not going to be like your full-time thing. I would say challenge yourself and fight the boss, and as you get the items, use them. So if you get Inquisitor, Inquisitor pieces, add it to your arsenal and keep going if this is something you can do for thousands of KC. So that's all I really got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that kill example. Like I said, it's raw uncut. We didn't die, thank God, and you know this didn't become <laughs> a really montage video of me dying. But hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit, and just let me know. If you're able to do the kill, man, if y'all got any questions, usually uh, I got my private off because I'm not on enough. So when I pop on, I might be on my phone at work when I got downtime and just chopping logs or doing some AFK. So I just keep it all because I, I hate using my phone to chat. So I just keep my private off. But let me know in the comments if this helped you out and if you're able to do it. Um, you know, like I said, there's some guides out there. I'll link some guys uh, that got some really good guides that I think will help you. Um, but besides that, man, you know, keep up, the, you know, keep up the grind. I'll see y'all at the next one, man. Peace.